So when I when I hit that million, it's almost like yeah. So the score of that particular game was that. That's it. And beyond that, I now looked at my next million. How will I now move into my third, my tenth, and all that? So clearly, what it does tell you is, you know, there are things that brought you that one million. Now, if you go to that second million as a target, what will you do now? Is it going to be the same things, or are there going to be more things that you need to go to and do? This is where you see real entrepreneurs, you know, uh, building up a base rather than spending a base. Mm. Because when you spend, you lose a momentum. Di mayaman naman tayo because of what we do with our spare time. Yan kasi ang difference ng marami, no? Kasi spare time, what do you do? Uh, Nagsasearch ka ba ng, ano, ng mga video, sa nalang ka lang po na whole day, or ang ginagawa mo, uh, gimmick, margada, or more chillax. Kasi kapag ikaw ay nag-work, syempre may 8 to 5 na job, but after your work, what do you do next? You still have time, di ba? na maraming mga negosyante naging successful because of what they did in their spare time. Okay, so in that particular case, one million is a scoreboard. So when I, when I hit that million, it's almost like, yeah. So the score of that particular game was that. That's it. And beyond that, I now looked at my next million. How will I now move into my third, my tenth, and all that. So clearly, what it does tell you is, you know, there are things that brought you that one million. Now, if you go to that second million as a target, what will you do now? Is it going to be the same things? Or are there going to be more things that you need to go to and do? So I, I, I tell a lot of people, again, the numbers are playing targets. Eventually, you will get to see that those numbers don't mean anything. Actually, what means is what 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 what's meaningful is what you want out of that capability, what you want out of that net worth that that gets you what makes you happy, mm. right? Mm. So it can be education for your kids, it can be the nice home for your family. But again, that million doesn't have to stop because it's a number. What do you want? And and, and I'll tell you this: this is what happens. You target one million. Once you get to one, one million, you'll realize, you know, not enough. Mm. Then you go for your next million. Mm. Then you go for your third. Mm. So you change. And then the most important thing is this. It's not how much, you know, how, how rich you become. It's the person you become. Mm. It's very important that the person who has earned this million is very, very different from the person who has earned this third or fifth or tenth million. That person will have more maturity, more experience, more acumen. But please, get out of the, the rut of saying, oh, I have a million, I cannot spend. Mm. I have a million, I can now take 200,000 out of that and enjoy the money. Well, that will just make you slide because what you've done is built up capital and after building up that capital, what you need to do is expand on that capital that you've already built. And that's why the, this is where you see real entrepreneurs, you know, uh, building up a base rather than spending a base. Mm. Because when you spend, you lose a momentum. Now, uh, I'd like to zero in also, when you start, or you said about acumen, you said about skills, you won't earn the first million if you don't also have a set of skills also. And the thing about getting the first million to getting you to 10, 20, 30, 40, it's a different set of skills also from 10, 20, 30, 40, or it could be a separate set of business or investments already as well. So for people who want to expand that base, for people who want to actually earn more or let it fire on all cylinders, what's your advice that you can give them also? Again, you'll have to look at your opportunities. I always tell people there are many, many ways of expanding your income potential. The worst part about you know the, the common Filipino is this. They start earning income. And usually, that's a single source of money. But they have other avenues for, ex for expenses. And then they expand the avenues for spending. What they don't realize is what they need to expand is the source of income. Mm. You have to have multiple sources of income and keep your avenues of spending to a particular limit. It's the other way around. If you want to be wealthier, if you want to become more abund abundant, that's what you need to do. Now, people don't do that. People go the other way and, and like rest on their laurels or begin to enjoy their money too early. So, as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing wrong with enjoying it for as long as you build the momentum to create a bigger base for the future. And as Marvin mentioned, 
you know, it changes. Why? You have more experience. You have more exposure. You now become more astute. You now get to see which is going to be more successful, which are the like stock positions that might be better to invest in, uh, the better companies, and you know, other businesses, direct businesses that you can be part of. You begin to become wiser. You begin to, like, let's say, know how it is to spot real winners. Mm. Now, you, you talked about winners. I want to address the people who started businesses or invested and they, they lost money because we've seen I've seen a lot of people also who are starting out that then when they did it, the business did not pan out. Some of them also resigned from their job. Parang at, at, I, I hope you can clarify this also. The biggest, uh, the biggest dream of Filipinos is to quit their job and start the business only to find out that the business has even a bigger set of headaches than them being, being employed as well. Okay, um, let, let's start with the first one, the failure, right? For me, you know, we always marvel at these big, big entrepreneurs, these big, big business people. We feel, you know, that they've created these empires and they're doing very, very well. Let me assure you, they've had their failures. They've had their failures. Many of us don't even discuss their failures because we easily get to forget about failures because we all talk about the successes, right? But the thing is, everyone goes through all that. I've done my own share, right? But this is what I'm going to tell you. I call that tuition fee. Mm. I call that school. You know, outside school, real business world, you'll still continue on the school of hard knocks. And these are all learnings that we have to uh, come become richer for. I mean, we will have to learn uh, about, you know, lessons and mistakes that we've gone through and then build on that to become better, to become, uh, again, more or less vulnerable, more bulletproof so that you know, you, you, can, you can absorb the losses. Now, to the second question, this is very, very important. Now, how do you now get into many of these things? See, I hear, hear this all the time, Marvin. Um, take the big leap, uh, the big shift. So from a job to entrepreneurship, why? Why do you have to do that? You know, you can actually start building side hustles while you have a job. Now, for those people who have jobs, you're going to say, oh, that's going to be difficult or that's going to be overwhelming or that's going to be bad. No, two things. Disclosure, performance. If you disclose to your employer, to your boss, what you're doing, if you have a side business with your wife, with your other partners, they know. And because they know, you're emancipated. Because if they're not going to allow you, at the very least, you know they're not allowing you. But the more important thing to remember is this. If it's not a conflict of interest situation and they believe that, that you're still doing your job well, they will allow you. So you can be free to do what you can do in your own free time, your weekends, your evenings. And these particular times of the day, you actually spend money, you don't earn. So you ship from earning you know, to spending, where it has to be the other way around. You have to continue the earning so that you have less time spending. Okay, now let's move to the number two, which is very, very important as well performance. If you're performing on the job and you make sure you earn your key, what's going to stop you from doing something on the side? Mm. So very important when you perform and you deliver better than what is expected of you, then you're more than worth the salary they're paying. And in, in that particular case, they will even support you with what you're doing because you know, you're providing value to the company. So when you disclose and you perform, there's no problem in having side hustles. Now, if your side hustles now become big, they become, you know, uh, consistent, they become a constant, then you have to think, well now, will, will my sideline become my main line, mm. right? So when you cross over, it's not too risky, it's not too overwhelming. You had, a, you had a track record of success, which you can just continue. Okay, well you were, well, you were answering, no, I, I was trying to... I, I saw deep questions from it. Because people know you as Rex Mendoza, big corporate guy already. What was your first side hustle uh, when you when you started out? Also, because I'm sure people would want to know that. But what did you do when you were just when you were just trying to get those first thousands or hundreds uh, when you were starting out? You know, my closest friends know this, and and many people today might not believe that I was already an executive of the company. I have, uh, I have a Changay space, you know? Okay. At a time in Ortigas, when it's not yet in vogue, the first Christmas Changay's, me and my wife, we were part of it. We were selling stuff that we bought from Hong Kong and China. Mm. And at some particular times, 
We even bought from Divisoria when we ran out of goods to sell. <laughs> you know, we did that. And then, you know, we, we, as I've said, we, 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 you know, we've done the dirty work. We sold, we competed. And five square meters of space, would you believe in a, in a, um, in a midnight madness uh, promo? You know, that five square meters of space would sell about 55 to 60,000 pesos, mm. right? So we, we did all that. We sold many other things on the side. We, we, we made sure that, you know, whether it's computers, it's hardware, it's software, we also became part of it. So all of these side hustles created a network, created momentum, and created a lot of capital base that we can use for other, our other investments. And, and the rest is history. You know, many people don't, don't go back to those, uh, you know, humbling moments. But the truth is, that's where we all started. Okay. That's where we all started. A another another follow-up from that, though. Uh, people would normally ask, they don't have any idea on what to start. How did you formulate that this is what I want to do, that you wanted to uh, sell in those changes? And was there was there a template for it? You saw some friends that were selling. That's why uh, you knew that. And so, yeah, I'll try this also because people, my friends are making money from this. So that at least I, what I want to get at is, if I'm, if I'm new, I don't know anything. What are the steps that I can get to at least know what I should start first? Okay, start with what you have interest on. Start with what you have interest on. So, so what got us into the Changi? You know, you know, my wife wanted to, you know, buy trinkets, you know, small stuff. I like toys. So we we started with that. Very important. We had exposure. We asked friends. You know, we had friends like. Miren Ortigas, my sister-in-law was in, in Giftgate. You know, we asked them about the business and, and we said, you know, we're gonna be starting small. We're not gonna be in a, you know, in a big, big shop from day one. So we started Changes, we started flea markets. And before you know it, we had two. We had, you know, more than just one outlet. Now, more important than exposure, create momentum. You have to do something. I mean, when I get to ask people out there, how many of you want to have your own businesses? Maybe 95% of you will say yes. But let me tell you, this is the clincher question. What have you done last week to make that happen? Many people cannot answer that second question because they want to have a business, but they don't do anything about it. So create momentum. It can start with talking to a friend about the business. It can start by picking up a book and understanding a business or, or, or maybe uh, visiting a restaurant the type of, of enterprise that you also want to start, the cuisine that you like to offer to a market, you know, feel the momentum. When you started, when you start spending money, when you start learning and exposing yourself and using time, there would be a point of no turning back. You will just want to take the plunge. So if you have the exposure and you have the momentum, you will start soon. And, and let me wish you all the luck because you're going to be on your way at the very least. Right direction, first baby steps, and you're on your way to success. Just to end, a lot of people don't start because they're scared of failure. They're scared now. What if I start the business, I lose this money? What will my friends think? Uh, they have this good concept, but the fear of starting is uh, is bigger than them actually executing. What's your words of encouragement for them? Okay, start small, so that if ever you lose it, at the very least you don't get completely burnt. So start small. And if you can start many small things, all the better because maybe you'll lose one or two but gain another one or two so you're gonna be, you know, okay. The second is, please, I mean, this is the more important side to Marvin's question. Please don't mind other people what they're gonna say. You know, for, for you, whether it's success or failure, it is always the path or the lesson to take. As I've said, even the failure is tuition. It's a tuition fee for learning, for success in the future. It's always on the right direction because you've done something. There are a lot of people out there who are not doing anything and you already are a step ahead over and beyond them, right? So please, just get on with it, do it. And you know, I'm so sure people like Marvin and me will always gonna be behind you. We're gonna be praying that you get blessed in these endeavors. You know the saying that money begets money. That's not actually true because you don't need money to start a business. Um, yes, you do, but there are different means, different ways to get money. So, we are going to apply the capital um, in many ways. But the most important is for you to establish your credibility, for you to establish your um, character, 
in a sense na ang pinakakura natin talaga sa negosyo is laway. So sabi nga nila pag nauubos ako ang laway, ito tayo na tubig, may laway ka ulit. The question is, um, how will you reach a point where people will trust you and you will build a name for yourself? The Bible talks about it. Sabi sa Bible, a good name is better than riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. So yung kami ako, nawala na ko ng negosyo, napaka-importante no, uh, trust ng mga tao dahil nagkalubi-lubi yung negosyo ko. Nagkautang-utang kami ng video. I have, a, I have a friend who told me this, uh, gave me this advice. Sabi niya sa akin, alam mo Jason, pag ikaw na wala ka ng negosyo, na wala ka ng pera, huwag ka magbubukang ko ka ba? And let's sink in sa akin yun, no, yung na-experience ko na. Kasi inalugi kami, parang feeling ko sa sarili ko, kawawa ko. And yung mga tao, imbis na lapitan ka, Siyempre, iba nag-iisip na baka utangan ako na to, baka meron kong kailangan sa akin. So, ang tendency, yung mga tao, lumalayo sa'yo. Tama rin yung sinasabi ng Bible na yan nga, kapag nagkakaroon tayo ng mga problema. If you have problems, especially financially, yung mga tao, lalayo sa'yo. Pero pa rin, for other people that don't know how to build their name, they don't, they just really employ, sakto, sakto lang. How do they get to a point na talagang di mani na papasok na talaga sa kanila? Dati yawa chat, dati yawa chat sa akin niya. How do how does it happen? How do you start from zero to one million? Okay. Wait, that's a nice zero to one million. Bago tayo talaga. Oh. Oh. Pag lang one million to zero na. Hindi lang yam sa akin one million to zero. Or ano? Or from profit to passion. Sounds ano? Parang unique na unique yun na. Ang ano? Ang importante kasi pag tayo ay empleyado. Yumayaman naman tayo because of what we do with our spare time. Yan kasi ang difference ng marami, no? Let's say, spare time or what do you do? Uh, Nagsisearch ka ba ng, ano, ng mga video, sa nalang ka lang po na whole day? Or ang ginagawa mo, uh, gimmick, margada, or more chillax. Kasi kapag ikaw ay nag-work, syempre may 8 to 5 na job. But after your work, what do you do next? You still have time, di ba? na maraming mga negosyante naging successful because of what they did in their spare time. So you use that and from there kasi ang um, ating purpose nagsisimula yan yung passion, di ba? Passion is overrated pero... Oh, order, I watched a video that said that passion daw is overrated. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yung passion overrated in the sense na, di ba? Follow your passion, ganyan. Pero if we will, if we will break it down, ang passion kasi nagsisimula yun sa interest. So, ano ba yung interest natin? Kasi pag tinaro mo isang tao, di ba, lagi kami nakakakuha ng kaya question na may magandang negosyo na pasukin. Si Marvin siguro, ano ba yung magandang stocks na mag-investan? Ano ba yung magandang gawin para, di ba, makapag-start ako ng negosyo? Trivia, pwede yun. Pero what, what I normally get is, uh, ano magandang stock bilhin bukas? That's one of the top <laughs> questions I get every day for. Uh, Marvin, bagsak yung stocks ko. Anong gagawin ko? Yun. Mas urgent, di ba? Oh, mas, so anyway. ano siya, kumbaga, mas specific. Pero, pag may nagtanong sa akin na magkano ba, ano ba dapat yung ano, gusto kong magandang negosyo pasukin, ang question nila talaga is, ano ba yung magandang negosyo na pasukin ko na hindi ako uh, magpapagod or yung hindi ako mahihirapan? Ano ba yung, yun yung gusto nilang itanong na question eh. Which is, walang ganong negosyo. Lahat ng negosyo, pinaghihirapan. Lahat yan pinagpawisan. Dahil nga, pag ikaw ay napapagod, nasa-stress ka, maganda yun eh. Kasi kaya nga may stress eh. Ang stress, ibig sabihin niya, you are doing something meaningful to you. Dahil kung hindi meaningful yan, hindi ka masa-stress. So, stress and meaning goes hand in hand. How do you change your perspective na itong stress ito can actually help me? So now, As an employee, do not think na ikaw ay isang empleyado. Yun ang start ng negosyo. In other words, kung empleyado ka, think dapat ang tingin mo sa work mo, negosyo. Paano ko papaluguin yung aking skills, yung aking abilities, yung aking asset? Paano ba mapapawaw ang aking boss? Para pag nag-negosyo ko na, alam mo na rin yung mga qualities na kung paano ka mawawaw. I heard this from one speaker, I think it was uh, Butch Jimenez. Uh, junior, and it was really fantastic. I heard this like, um, I don't know if I, I was still single. Sabi niya na kung ikaw daw, 
uh, as an individual, we need three types of skills in order to be successful in life. The first one is how to be an employee. Ibig sabihin, kasi mag-empleyado ka, madidisiplina ka eh. Papasok ka, kailangan, may boss ka, pag-alisin namin ang boss mo. Diba? 9 to 5 or 8 to 5, papasok ka, nagkakaroon ka ng discipline. I, I don't know if I asked this before, pero yeah. you ever an employee? Um, a few times. Mm, you were okay. Sige, sige. Okay. A few times. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so you, you discipline as an employee? Discipline as an employee. Tapos, yung nagiging ano ka, nagiging uh, aware ka sa corporate. Kasi maraming mga negosyo kaya nag-fail dahil yung mga owners, walang disiplina, wala naman mag-operex eh, wala accountability. You need to go to work at this uh, particular time. Walang mga deadlines. Kaya, ang mga negosyante, kailangan self-motivated ka eh. Kasi pag hindi ka self-motivated, ang bilis ma-demotivate. Pag walang pumasok na benta, wala na yung ano mo. Wala na yung sense of urgency mo. Kaya, being an employee is very important. Second one naman is of course, being an entrepreneur. Wala? Or entrepreneur. Paano ka mag-negosyo? Even yung maliit lang na negosyo, mag-start ka muna with uh, fishball or Karang ako, yung bata ako, nagbibenta ako ng mga bag. Bata pa lang, na-expose na ako sa pagbibenta. Uh, paano ba yung ins and outs, inventory. Unti-unti matututunan ba yan. What's the best thing that you've ever sold in your entire life? The best thing that I ever sold in my entire life? Mm. Yeah, uh, when you were starting as an entrepreneur. Oh, uh, that, ano? That gave you a significant revenue. Ang pinaka-matiling binenta ko na sa buong buhay ko, yung stock smarts na libro. <laughs> 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 Link below on how you can order, guys. Link below. <laughs> but uh, seriously, marami talaga na tulog niyo sa smart. So yeah, hindi hindi ako tulad mo. Yung tatlong libro mo binasa ko talaga from ano cover to cover. Actually, si Marvin ang binabasa lang sa libro ko yung ano lang introduction. Actually, hindi man libro ko. Ay, hindi yung first three. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Anes ako, ah. Anes, ah. Yung dalawa, hindi ko pa na mabasa. Pero yeah. mabasahin ko rin. Sign natin. Ako, ah, pati yung libro ko, eh. For God, Carlos. Yung first book ko, one chapter na pa lang nababasa. Hindi naman, I know that I'm an I. <laughs> Pati sa second book, alam ko rin, I'm an I. Dahil may question ko, nakal nakalimutan ko na. So, ano, you sell things. Sabi mo, sell things. Ah, sell. Yun, yung stat smarts. Okay. Uh, kasi sa sales, no, when you're selling something, in, ang important is not naman what you sell. Eh. What's important is uh, you, because you are the one that people are buying. People buy you before before they buy a product or buy an opportunity. Kaya uh, as you build your credibility, unti unti lalaki yung network nyo, and unti unti nadami din yung inyong mga contacts. Because it's not what you know, eh. it's who you know. Pero may mas malalim pa doon ah. And I know you. Yeah, ano mas malalim? Ano mas malalim? <laughs> it's not what you know, it's who you know. And it's who knows what you know. Kasi ang daming mga best kept secrets na ang galing-galing mo. Even in speaking. So speaking, hindi naman yung mga speakers na talagang magkagaling yung nasa mainstream. Kasi merong iba, hindi naman sobrang galing. Pero sila yung nahahak mo ng mga bookings because they know how to market themselves. Pero meron din mga ibang speaker na magagaling but you don't, you haven't heard of them. You don't know who they are because yun nga, it has to actually be a combination of that. So yung entrepreneurship, it helps you in terms of developing a different kind of mindset. Kasi ibang iba talaga mag-isip ang mga entrepreneurs at mga employees. Ang employee, pag nawala ng trabaho, iniisip nila ano yung next work na kailangan kong gawin, pasukin. Ang negosyante, ang iniisip niya, ano ba yung negosyo na tayo kong pasukin? Ano ba yung negosyo na pwede kong gawin na tumutugma sa aking abilities? Meron ako mga kilala, napaka-successful. Grabe, super successful when it comes to uh, being in the corporate. But these same people, if you put them in a place na nag-resign na sila, nag-retire na sa work nila, gagawa sila sa inyong business nila, hindi na sila makapag-negosyo kasi inisip nila big time ka agad. And hindi nila alam kung paano palakihin yung pera na maliit para lumaki kasi nasign na sila yung malaki na at naka-provide na lahat. And then the last one, not to sound spiritual, but the third one is how to be a volunteer. Volunteer. How to be a volunteer? The best way to be, oh. to learn how to be a volunteer is in church. Mm. Imagine mo pag... Victory Green Hills. 
Victory Green Hills, New Life, Alabang. Ang mga kaibigan natin yan. Um, and pag ikaw ay naging volunteer, ibig sabihin yung mga tao, when you become a leader, they won't follow you because of your position, but they will follow you because of your influence and because of the relationship, the trust that you have built with them. Those are the three things that you need. And once you have already experienced all three, then that's the time you can really assess ano ba yung mga skills ko, saan ba ako magaling. Hindi mo pwedeng itanong yan ano ba yung negosyo na pwede kong pasukin. Kasi magkakaiba tayo eh. Iba yung experience yung iba yung contacts nyo, iba yung alam nyo. Yung iba, uh, trash. Pero dahil linya niya yan, yung trash nagiging cash. Yung iba naman, cash. Pero, nagiging trash kasi pinasok lang dahil akala nila pera lang yan and na-discover na hindi pala nila ligit. Hindi, kasi hindi pala ko, kala ko crash yung sabi mo, trash pala. <laughs> so yung, yung crash naging cash anyways. <laughs> so, pwede na yung crash. Oh, crash. Um, <coughs> yung trash nagiging cash and yung cash naman nagiging trash. Um, you can... No. So if they have that skills, they can go from zero to one. Ano from zero to hero eh. Man, zero to zero. Na, no, no, man. Zero to one million. If they have those skills, um, yes. But it will also... Alam mo, sa mga bro lang, ang pinakamahirap talaga yung first million eh. Pero pag nakawa mo na yung first million mo, uh, yan medyo, mas magiging madali na. But you need to have need to have the mindset na you, you're always hungry. Because life is not about making it. Life is about maintaining it. How can you remain successful, not just being successful? Kasi maraming mga successful eh. Ita ka ko, naniniwala ko lahat ng tao magiging, su magiging successful. Ang question is, hanggang kailan? Iba naging successful na isang taon, iba isang linggo, iba isang araw, iba ilang minuto. <laughs> Tapos ako, ito kami ganun. Uh, ilang minuto na magpasok. Par uh, parang nangyayari sa kanina. <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, I agree with what so, you say. So now, uh, people who can go from zero to one million, it's a possibility. Pero that just requires them also doing the work. Yes, of course. Wala naman ano, uh, shortcut. Yeah, yeah, there's no shortcut to success. Right, so that's it. Yeah, another video with Jason Law. I know you guys love this series of videos that we're having Biggest here. Friend. No, so. Uh, if you guys like him, I'll put the link below so you can follow him in Unique TV. If you want to change your portfolio to the next level, follow <laughs> someone who's really, who has been there and has hit yeah. million multiples. Please follow us. We uh, have the Marvin, no? uh, millions of followers. But we uh, launched this new uh, new page, Unique TV. You can follow us in our URL, the Unique. TV, so we're on FB, Facebook, we're also on YouTube, and we feature unique stories, people, and anything unique, and I believe that this can add value. That's my prayer and hope, to add value to everyone who will watch our videos. Yeah, so they also have merchandise, all unique plus stores are there, so <laughs> I yeah, if you want t-shirts, caps, yeah, sure, there are a lot of unique, so I wish. <laughs>